this year wallet it's a white girl why are you carrying pictures of white kids hey my friends you think he's as good as me boy <laughs> Niggas, put that boy down. Let's regret them plies. That's up for you, boy. Let me see inside. You know I can't, Mamie. Mr. Rayner, open the box. I have the papers right here. I, I simply can't. Then fine. Get me a hammer, a crowbar, whatever it takes. I'm opening this here box. Today. Okay, I'll do it. In August 1955, 14 year old Emmett Till was visiting family in Mississippi when he was kidnapped and brutally murdered for the crime of whistling at a white woman. J.W. Milam and his half-brother Roy Bryant were tried and acquitted for the killing of Emmett Till. The all-white jury took less than an hour to deliberate. After the trial, a writer, William Bradford Huey, learned that there were other people involved in the murder and offered to pay them for a detailed account of what really happened that night. Only Roy and J.W. agreed to sign the release forms and tell their story, but they didn't tell the whole truth. Mr. Whitten, sorry to bother you, sir, but I'm Bill Huey, a writer. Yes? I would like to pay your clients, J.W. Milliam and Roy Bryant, if they confess to what really happened to Emmett Till. The jury already vindicated them. So you know they're no longer in any jeopardy. Why should they trust you, not some other reporter crawling all around here? Well, I'm the one that discovered why Emmett's father was killed. Go on, Mr. Huey. I'm willing to pay them about $4,000 for the rights, if they tell me the truth. So I'm guessing you mean 3000 for them and 1000 for attorney fees. Is that right, Mr. Hewitt? Yes, sir. And they just have to tell the truth. I want a confession. Hell, I never even asked them. They're innocent as far as I know. Well, thanks, Mr. Hewitt, for letting us speak. Sure. I sure could use the money. You're just looking for the truth, boys. Whatever that might be. Now, are you sure the law can't you try can't us? You can't be tried for the same crime twice, J.W. I'm so sure about that. Well, I am. Fine, Roy. You talk. Let's start. Emmett Teal coming into your store with money. You ready, Mr. Hewitt? Um, yes. Well, uh, me and my wife, Carolyn, we run a store that all the local cotton pickers buy from. There's are groceries, meats, candies. We're real good to them, and they's real good to us. And everybody knows their place. And that little fat boy come from Chicago. <laughs> Go ahead, Amy. Show them what you showed me. These are my friends from Chicago. They all white. You ain't gonna make white friends down here. Who's that white girl? Who? Her? Yeah. Well, th that's my g girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobo, you fool. You ain't been with no white girl. You lying. You so crazy. <laughs> if you've been with a white girl, go inside and show us how you do <laughs> Come on, Bo. Best put that wallet away. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you ain't had no white girl. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> That boy's gonna get himself killed. I don't feel nothing. Uh -huh. That's just a beer belly. Mommy. Mommy. That all? Uh, how about it? Don't you touch me, boy! B -b 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 
Get in that boy, Chase Kale, into the back of the stall, grabbing on her waist, saying, she knows how to treat a white woman. Well, my wife was so scared, knowing she didn't have a gun underneath the counter, and she ran out of the car to get her a gun. <laughs> and you know what that little nigger boy gun and did? Brother, he goddamn whistled at her. You just don't damn do that, Mississippi. Well, Carolyn told JW's wife, well, Juanita. Well, his wife and my wife, well, they as close as we Well, anyway, I guess they didn't want us knowing. But in a town like money, ain't nobody keeping a secret from nobody. Unless you're white. You fellas uh, need a break? <laughs> Nah, friend, we just getting started. Well, I'll start asking around where this boy might be at so I can have a little talk with him. Well, so as luck may have it, see, uh, we was told that this little nigga was up, be over at Moe's Wright's place. Well, and we ain't ever been over no, Moe's Wright's been place before that night, but I, I come up yelling, Preacher! <laughs> Preacher! Preacher! You got them boys from Chicago? Yes, sir. We'll talk to that fat boy. The one that done the talking in money. That the boy. That the boy? Come on now, fat boy, get up. It's gonna be okay, Simi. They just gonna try to scare me a little bit. Go on, get back to bed, you hear? Go on now, boy. When that nigga great uncle testified at our trial, stood up and pointed at us in court, <laughs> well, da he, da he, or whatever that old man said. From what I know, it's the first time that a black man had ever testified against a white man. In these parts. Let me tell you, that old boy, he's lucky he's on to Chicago. He'd have been next. Hmm. Let's get back to the night you come for Emmett. Was anybody here with you? No, they're just, just Roy and me that night. That's right, just, just me and Roy that night. Yes, sir. What happened next? I remember J.W. asking old Mose if he knew us. <laughs> Smart old man, he answered right. No, no, you give me those pants. You won't be needing those, boy. Come on now. No, you ain't need those either. Get your shoes on, boy. I ain't got all night. I see you over there. Roll on over, get to sleep. You hear me? Now, you recognize any of us here? No, sir, I don't know you. How old are you, old boy? 64. Well, if you want to live to see 65, you ain't recognize any of us here. Come on, boy. We'll pay you whatever you want. Just release him. Go on back to bed, woman. Mind your business. I want to hear them springs. <clears throat> Please, what will it cost to make this right? Well, you can even have what we have. Well, how much you talking? Oh, please. Keep walking. No, no, right. no, please, sir, please. No, 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 no. Well, that boy wasn't even scared of us. Yeah, he gave us no choice but to oh, beat up he's up He's strong on. for 14, Almost too. full grown, as far as uh -huh. I can tell. So, after you kidnapped Emmett, what did you do with him? Well, we drove him to live. We took him to a shed on my property where we could talk to him. We was just trying to scare the little nigger. Hit him again, J.W. Now, you will address me as yes, sir, and no, sir. You got that, boy? You're going to love respect, nigger. What could we do? We had to put the little nigga in his place. Well, we should really whip that son of a bitch. Where's Roy? Roy, get on over here and show some dignity for your wife, you coward. <laughs> Come on now. Well, doing nothing ain't gonna make you a man. Come on, boy. Get in there. <laughs> ah! 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 You can hear it harder than that. You ain't never gonna touch a white woman ever again. <laughs> Are we done now? You're pathetic. Look at me, boy. What you got to say for yourself now? Just do what he said. Just do what he Too says. tight. They gonna hurt you, boy. Get enough. They gonna hurt you. Enough. 
Well, I ask that boy one last time. Do you still think you're better than us, boy? Do you still think you're the same as white people? I'm talking to you, boy, what you say. That's it. Hold this boy down. I think you're having trouble hearing me, boy. Maybe this will help. He can hear you just fine, boy. Give me that, yeah. He's just down ah! right in the head. That's all, boys. Ah! You still think you're better than us? Even after all this? Tell him you ain't better than us. Ah! Tell me he's better than you. I think you're having trouble seeing me, brother. <laughs> Hold him down. Ah! Ah! We was just planning on scaring him and letting him go, that's all. Well, beating up on him a little bit, try to put the scat at him, but uh, he wasn't afraid of us. <laughs> Not that he was showing. All right, boy. I'm gonna ask you one more time. You still think you better than us? Better than us now. We're on. Please continue. Well, we drove around with Emmett trying to figure out what to do. Hey, boy, you ain't seen nothing, right? What you gonna say? I didn't see nothing. Where was Emmett? Well, he was in the back of the truck. How'd you know he wasn't gonna escape? <laughs> Roy was watching her make sure he didn't. Where's that blood coming from? It's a deer. But hunting season's not... Now this is what happens to them smart niggas in Mississippi. So I make Emmett carry a 75-pound gin fan, and the boy can barely carry it, and I make him lift it up in the truck. Right, Roy? Yep, yep, that, that's, that's right, it's about right. Well, by this time it's morning, and it's starting to get light outside, so we gotta make sure that nobody sees us and thinks we're still in this fan. So next you take Emmett to the river? Yeah, I make that fat little boy take off his clothes and tie some barbed wire around his neck. So I have that gun to that little nigger boy's head, and I ask him, you ever been with a white woman, boy? And that nigger look up at me and told me he'd been with a white woman. So then I asked him if he still thought he was as good as I was for the last time. You know what that boy say? He look at me and he say, yeah. Well, I had no choice, sir. I had to shoot him right up there on that hill. And then we just push his body over into the water. Yeah, who shows that? Let me tell you, my wife used to ace me during the trial if you'd done it. I never wanted to know. I always told her no. What's she gonna say when she hears this? Hmm. Well, she's gonna say proudly that you got us off for doing something that don't damn mean nothing around here. So, Mr. Hewitt, uh, who gonna play us if you make a, a movie about our lives over this? I don't know, Roy. Uh, I, I hope it's Montgomery Cliff. <laughs> Or maybe they get Peter Laurie to play you. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, we done now? We gonna get the money? We good. I'm just gonna need you to read and sign a few things first. Uh, what have I done? Well, John and Bill, uh, we're heading out for some whiskey to celebrate. Uh, Y'all wanna <sighs> join us? Sure. How about you, you coming? Nah. I better get writing before tomorrow. Mr. Hewer. I did a little research of my own. You did? On you. If you was the first to discover Emmett Till's father wasn't killed in action during the war, but instead was executed for rape and murder, how come you wasn't the first to write that story? I didn't want anything coming out that would hurt the chances of J.W. and Roy from being found guilty. Well, it got over anyway. Well, maybe you're a good attorney. I like to oh, think maybe. so. Oh, maybe. White men killed a black boy in Mississippi. When all this blows over, no one's gonna remember who Emmett Till was anyway. Well, I would like to think that I am good at my job, too. Good day, Mr. Whitten. 
Look what they did to my boy. <laughs> Hate isn't going to breed in me now. As it shouldn't have bred in the hate that killed my boy. <sighs> Emmett isn't going to die in vain. We're going to have an open casket, Mr. Rayner. But Mrs. Steele. <laughs> I want the world to see what they've done to my boy. I want them to see him as I see him now. <laughs> the world is going to change because of you. I promise. Mammy Till's decision to have an open casket and allow the press to publish photos of her son ignited the civil rights movement. 100 days after Emmett's death, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on the bus to a white person. I thought of Emmett Till and I could not go back. Rosa Parks. William Bradford Huey finished his article based on his interviews with Roy Bryant and J.W. Milo. The shocking story of the approved killing in Mississippi appeared in Look Magazine on January 24, 1956, and shocked the world. J.W. kept Roy's share of the money from the interview. Roy and J.W. were acquitted of murder and never indicted on kidnapping charges. They both died of cancer. Broke. Mammy Till went on to be a champion of the civil rights movement and led one of the most successful fundraising tours in the NAACP's history.